Hey, glad to have you back. I'm doing a little bit more work with my VR model to learn the program better that I'm using. Although I still don't have any dang on hand tracking. But anyway, we just had our first live stream on Twitch this weekend. And if you weren't there to see it, I wanted to make sure that you got a chance to see the highlights from that stream. So for this week and maybe next week, depending on how it goes, I'll be presenting you those highlights on YouTube. If you'd like to catch the next stream, please follow us on Tales of Atonement at Twitch. Thanks and enjoy. The reference on the rep on the right, that's my representation because I am here standing in as IMO. Because soon enough we should have actually Shane over there. Which he'll be talking, so. Yep. That's IMO. And you spelled it perfectly. I used to think it was pronounced I meal for a long time. But then I learned better. Yeah, it's really been interesting. Hiring some of these uh, voice actors that we've been working with. Actually, from other countries. Because they've corrected us on the pronunciation of several of our characters' names. Like the fact that Madeline coming from Scotland and her family coming, they would mostly come saying riddle. It'll, it, it would pop out like on accident. It, it just would often until they got really used to it, just saying R Riddell. Because they would just, that, that's what they would, that's how their culture actually pronounces that name, even now. Yep. And that's why Madeline takes to calling him Martin Riddell. Uh, Riddle. From time to time. She flows up once in a while back and forth, but when she's a young adult, she's been pretty consistent on calling him proper. Martin Riddell. There. Now it's pretty obvious which one is Shane and Martin. Yeah, colors are like the only way you can't tell them apart. This is why Huey, Dewey, and Louie are a thing. Yeah. You, you know, can't say the chipmunks, because the chipmunks look way different enough. Oh, hey. There's Imel. Imel here. And Imel over here. Here and here. Here and here. Hmm. I only have one panel in the next two pages that has Tam on it. So I am just going to go ahead and do Tam real quick. It's a Tam head. It's a Tam head. It's a Tam uh, shirt. who's in here so any of you that might be in here and any of you that will see this recording later i super want to say thank you for who, who all of you that helped make that um that short i made it was just like a fluke where i was like hey you know it's inclusionary and i really wanted people you know maybe it'll help someone understand from a cisgendered woman's point of view in our in our series to a cisgendered male and the context is a little different in the story, but as one of the people that wrote it, it's still within the feeling of where we were going when she said it. And there's so many of you that helped that go kind of viral, and I'm so thankful for that. It, it hit thousands within hours of Oops. posting it. So thank you. I really, really love that specific story. That, that, even that little snippet, just reaching more people so that they understand better. Thank you. Ramble, ramble! Well, that's what we're here for, to talk to people. I like being seriously distracted by what I'm doing, so that I lose track of what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no help. I never am. 
It's an AD, the ADHD trait. Like nobody's business. Yeah. You know, I gotta wonder how I set up those, like, stream redeems like some people got. A lot of this music right now is gonna be the cast of characters. I love using the cast of characters music. Yeah, a lot of them have, um, uh, uh, like, oops, Going way too far. Of those kids, um, there are three of them that have their own theme song. We're working on a theme song for, um, we're considering making a theme song for one of the other ones. We're thinking about making a theme song for Imol because of her importance and whatnot, but at the same time, without giving you guys away a whole heck of a lot, because of traveling reasons, she's not really in a lot of parts of the story, so it's almost like, is it worth it? Yes. Did you say yes it is? Uh-huh. Yes, I did. Okay. I mean... Yeah, also, that's right. not quite what I was getting at. Yes, that's true, but that's not quite what I was getting at. Cast of Characters is actually the name of the band that's been composing most of this music we've been listening to so far. Oh. And wow. they're available on Soundstripe. It's really awesome. I love every, like every single time I see that a song is by Cast of Characters now on Soundstripe, I get it like immediately. Is it like a lot of Scottish sounding music mostly? Yeah, actually. It's cool. They they got they got a really good like medieval feel to a lot of their stuff. Very like D&D &D ambience and stuff like that. Is so, it D&D &D more so or is it more so um, uh, Scottish, Irish, Gaelic thing? I like... You, you can find like a mixture of it, I feel. Oh, that's cool. And I feel like, you know, especially... Well, it's not like Welsh music doesn't go well for D&D. &D. Right. Right. Exactly. Because honestly speaking, a lot of early D&D &D is based on that era. That, that area. Yeah, it's, if it's not England, it's Gaelic. And, like, a lot of D&D &D kind of, it almost feels like it starts in one, and, and it's like a trek. Kind of like, um, oh god, Journey to the, to the West? Or is it Journey? Yeah, Journey to Journey the West. Journey to the West. Yeah, and it's like, it, it almost feels like no, your party East? starts in one and ends in the other. You know what I mean? Or am I crazy? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's why the title is Monomyth. Yeah, because it's supposed to echo a lot of things like when you play D and D with your friends, like or other type games. Like, let's be serious. Um, I'm sorry, personal opinion. Don't ha come at me after me. Um, I'm sorry, but for a long time I've been preferring Pathfinder, and some of um, Wizard's recent decision making skills have made me kind of think that was the right thing to do because I've watched a lot of people come over in the past year. It's yeah. worth it to have D&D &D, like books when it comes specifically, but it's like just I personally am a 3 and 3.5 snob when it comes to D&D. &D. It meshes perfectly with um, with Pathfinder and in me in particular like um what's it called any the glaring problems with 3 and 3.5 D&D you can mesh them really well can be Pathfinder easily Pathfinder. patched with Pathfinder and then yes. uh you know 5th edition if you choose to go that far Oh, you don't need 5th edition if anything i think 5th edition is good for the monsters and a very selective small handful of other things that between the fan base and the added um books i kind of think they covered it no no look if you take the fifth edition monsters you have to take the fifth edition characters because they made it to balance and fifth edition characters get a ton more abilities so you're literally going to be cutting your care your players short if you take 5th edition monsters and face them up against, like, especially 3rd edition. Like I'm a 3rd so edition ranger. I'm so soft and squishy, though. I'm so soft and squishy when I'm a DM. I don't often kill my players unless they're, they, they, them being difficult has caused their character to make bad decisions so consistently that I have to find a way to do some kind of punishment. Just in the sense of karma, in real life, there is things that happen. Like, oh, you decide not to do your dishes for a month. Well, and now it, you have bugs. I mean, there's there's karmic answers to things it's, you do. It's 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 a standard case of FAFO. 
Yeah. There are consequences for your actions. Yeah. And that should all that should that should always be present. You know. In books too, with even in the way that we've been writing this, we we very it like it's almost like a choose your own destiny because we very much believe in the um multiple timeline theory and you will uh, see that more the more this series goes on, but I'm not gonna talk anymore about that now. It's totally off topic. You very much we very, very much believe in that concept and because of that, our story can sometimes almost come across like a choose your own adventure because there's pieces and parts like everywhere um like without going a lot of detail right now murder right. hobos murder hobos we disagree yeah well <laughs> murder murder hobos get the murder hobo treatment yeah yeah that's that's fair You can kill as many people as you want, but there's always a bigger fish. Like a Tarasque in a jar, for instance. Don't start me on Tarasques. Oh my god. <laughs> I believe her uh, uh, face one Tarasque. That was enough. That, that was more than enough. I, I want nothing more to do with Tarasques ever. Look, all I'm saying is if you mess around with the wrong airship and a drow lady with a, with a Tarasca in a jar shows up, you're going to have a bad time. No, you're going to have a bad day. Sorry, I'm awful with memes. Bad time, bad day. It depends on if you're quoting South Park or Undertale. True. True, but you're showing your age a lot. How dare you mention South Park? South Park hasn't been cool since last Thursday. That's how, how long it's been. Ugh. Talk about dating yourself with memes. Yeah, that's my point. I legitimately can't remember the last time I came across a last Thursday meme. Like, someone in the wild saying it, or... Online, I genuinely like yeah. this is the, the 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 most recent time I remember it in like four years, five years. There's a point in which you know memes just need to die, though, and and last Thursday has 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 had its time. <sighs> so there's that. Oh, but uh, gazebos will never see the end of its time, ever. Yeah. Gazebos are scarier than Tarras. Yes, especially if you just shoot them with arrows. Yes. They they hate the arrows. We're just gonna antagonize it. <laughs> so let us pick another topic. And honestly speaking, just so you guys know, this is a safe space. If you guys are like, you know what, I'm good on information about why Martin is the way he is. Why he is the way he Today, is. Today, I'd like to have a conversation about, um, what do you guys know about the politics of rainwater collection? Rainwater collection? I don't know! I was looking for something that wasn't politically charged! So you went to the politics of rainwater collection? Well, no one should tell you you can't collect rainwater. But they I try mean, to. It, it's kind of sure. Like, it, it, politically, there's nothing wrong with it. Look, I mean, the, N Nestle, Nestle doesn't want you to have water. Of course they don't. They sell water. This is why we, really, we shouldn't have corporations involved in our... Dang it, this got real political real quick. I'm sorry, I actually thought that would be a non-political issue to bring up, and there it goes. <laughs> Let's get into the to polit politics. Of something would be unpolitical. Yeah. Smart of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was super smart. I'm like incredibly smart. Sorry. And that has to do with Martin is the way he is because Martin is a fire and he naturally hates water. No. Um. Hey, do we have an ETA on either the um? 
episode two comics from Sammy Carp? Uh, yeah, actually, she got done, um, she's done with all of the sketches. She's working on the actual line arts of them right now. Um, and her due date is, I think it's like May 4th? I think her due date is more May 4th. So, she's actually moving pretty fast for that, though. And I'm legit. Um, if I get, if we get done with that early enough, and I have the cash for it, I'm going to immediately start on, um, episode three's, you know, comic book. Yeah, let's do it. I, I really want to get to a point where I have a backlog of, like, five comics from wherever we're at. That would make me really happy. And, like, we're just, like, slowly, you know, Angel's doing the initial color, and then we send it off to someone to jazz them up and look, make it look prettier, and then I cut up pieces and send it off to animators, and they animate the individual pieces, and then it's like, oh, wow, by the time we need the next episode, we have it. And then I really want, I was like, I want it to be, like, a factory, you know? I really want that. I don't want it to be so much of a factory, though, where I have, like, five episodes done all at once. That's useless to me. I want to kind of stagger it out, so, you know, I'm kind of like picking pieces and parts to do to try to, you know, keep everything lined up properly. How about the politics of the best ball fantasy being eight and why you're wrong? I always know I'm going to have argument whenever I say eight. If you say eight, seven, or four, you're going to get arguments. Look, I'll be perfectly honest with you. The politics of garden dances really close to child slavery and poly and, and fascism no when you really get down to it, to where they're not even allowed to have things like toys and hoverboards on the on the garden premises. Yeah, that's like real bad. Like like if you don't that means the ones that actually live there are legitimately not allowed to have them. That's tight. I mean that's really sad. And that means that they have money. And they're not allowed to have them unless they, like, rent out a box, um, uh, uh, what was it called? Um, what are those things called? The, um, post office, P.O. boxes, unless you rent out a P.O. box that's big enough to fit it, you have nowhere to take it, or some other kind of storage area. Like, you have to spend extra money just to hold it somewhere so you can use it in town. Yep. Oh, how about this one? That's not fascist at all. How about this one? Did you know that Norg says we disagree? Really? Yeah, yeah, Norg disagrees. How about this one? Well, guess what? It's the faculty of Norg that's taking it away, so obviously. Um, how about this one? Did uh, Final Fantasy VIII, you guys know that Squall is like originally designed to be like a delinquent almost like uh, Jotaro from Jotaro Kujo. See what they needed to do if they wanted that though they should have taken Seifer to start with and just take him out of the disciplinary committee and it's that simple. Yeah. You have something very similar to if, if they If they just started with Cypher as the main character it would have just been easier. It would have been easier. If that's what they were going but for. I understand that's why a lot of the uh, whatever commentaries are actually him saying yada yada da da ze. Yeah. I've been training myself to say da wa lately, so I stumbled over that one. Da wa is how we say it, and da ze is how they say it. Oh god, I just othered men from from just how we speak because of how Japanese is uh, is, uh, is well, a gender specific culture yeah. with language like Spanish. Japanese language does that anyway. Just, but so there was actually a uh, 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 an instructor. I don't remember his name. I think it was like a Rocky or something like that. There's an instructor that stalks Squall around the garden. What? Yeah. Not Kesis. No, Creepy! no. Like like a male, older, like I'm gonna get you, you delinquent style teacher. Almost like a almost like Stop a common. No, no. The stalk Squall. Almost like a Kamoshida style guy. Okay, that's really creepy when you say Kamoshida. I'm immediately putting it. Into okay, 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 okay. So like he's 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 not. He's he's. Yes, there's an old pervert that stalks you to make sure that if you do anything bad. No, to... no, no, not like that. <laughs> 
No, there's there's a uh, there's a t there's a sort of uh, stereotypical. Oh, this young man's up to no good. I'm going to try to get him on various things and give him demerits. Sort of person that follows Squall around the garden. Creepy. I always found people like that creepy. Oh yeah. You nothing better to do with your time, but literally harass well, me. Well, you know the um the thing is, you can meet him. Sometimes, if you do various things, um, oh, the the part where the student asks Squall to see his gunblade. If you say yes and pull out the gunblade, then there's a chance that that professor will like show up and give you demerits, and and make you put your gunblade away and, and stuff like that. Also, that will drop your uh, seed rank. Seed rank. I believe that. Hold on a second. Need to put up some redeem so I remember to drink stuff. <laughs> well, you don't have uh, uh, any. Uh, what are they called? I'm at right no now. There's no points going up yet, so I don't think we have enough. Um... Oh, yeah, okay. I think that I think that has, that has to be a thing that um. It's probably like what's on YouTube, where when you get like a, a, a thousand Just so many. When yeah. you get partners and stuff By like the that. Way, I find it hilarious how once you started recording, the dog took up residence behind your butt. I, I love the effect of, of the model with the drawing pen. It's really cute, honestly. She just kind of took up residence up there as soon as we were, we were like recording, and it's odd because she doesn't do that. So I don't know if this is like something that she's going to start doing. And she's actually asleep. Like she, her eyes are now closed. They weren't. I don't think they were closed in that picture. Yeah, they're actually like twitching closed now. She's she's gone. So she's chill. Um, I don't know if this is going to become a new thing that she does. Like if it's some kind of interesting form of protectiveness because she's streaming but either way she wanted to be closer and that's exactly what she's doing oops that happens more often than i'd like to admit <sighs> um there it is i will never understand exactly why when you were in the, like, time stream, whatever, you still got seed payments. There's no time here. No. Why are you paying? No, you're, you're looking at the wrong way. Time is compressed, which then means... I should be getting paid after paid after paid after paid and yet get nothing at all. There is uh... something not right here. No matter how you want to look at it, no matter how you want to play with it, there's something very not right about that. Uh, setup. you know what? Uh, b b video game magic. Yeah, that that's what oh, it like is. TV magic. Yeah. It's an interesting little bit of information, and that is knowing that there's each a little bit of either of their parents in both Martin and Shane. Oh gosh, yes. Shane looks more like his mom. Martin looks more like his dad. Well, and also here's the thing. Martin wears red because of his dad. Shane's an heir. Why do you think he runs around in green and gold? It could easily be nature. It's very easy to get, uh, uh, get confused as to what Shane is. Nope. It's because Tassandra wears green and gold. And loves his mom. And his mom knew she was his favorite. That's why it hurt so bad. Always hurts her when he's naughty. He's most definitely the more naughty between the twins. Yep. It's because of Shane's rambunctiousness when he was younger and being a lot more like into stuff and like we need to be in the way and things like that. We need to be up under his parents. Not under thumb, so much as she paid a lot of attention to him. So, when it came time to, like, what the kids acted like, you know, Shane took a lot more after his mom, 
And because Martin was calmer, he spent a lot more time around his dad. Dad would be busy trying to teach him something. He felt he was calm enough and mature enough to be taught at yep. your age. So now I'm going to throw it back to you, friends. What did you think of the stream? We're doing everything we can to make sure we have as many opportunities to connect and communicate with as many of our fans and viewers as possible. So please, your feedback is greatly important to us. If you'd like to see more of this and my regular coloring videos, like, subscribe, ring my bell, and don't forget that we have a Patreon open. Currently, the $10 tier is hosting the entire Monomyth comic. So please check out for that. And speaking of Patreons, let's go ahead and congratulate a few of them now. We have, in our Keeper tier, we have Lundair Lumen. In our non-combatant tier, Jay Smorland. Oh hey, actually, the two of you actually made it to stream. Thank you so much for showing up personally to support us. Other non-combatants are Arya Gamari, Charles Tam, and our observer is Shadow Fox. We'd like to get more names for this section, so please come and check out our Patreon. Another artist shout out this week to Dimas Yuli on Fiverr for providing the art we colored in the stream. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.